All right, for this belt work, we're just gonna put it straight into the calculator with the N over D button. So N over D, two minus three, and then plus eight. And then I go down to the denominator, four divided by two times two. I gotta get out of the fraction before I put that plus 18 in there. But when I do, I push enter, and the calculator gives me directly 79 fourths. So if you did this by the order of operations yourself, you'd end up with the same uh, fractional answer right here. And we do want the improper fraction, not the mixed number or the decimal. There's two objectives for today. I can identify terms, like terms, and coefficients. And also I can simplify expressions by combining like terms. Take a minute and copy those down, please. All right, this lesson is very vocabulary heavy because this is all vocabulary right here that we haven't seen. Terms, like terms, and coefficients. Uh, but there's another one that we can include on that, and that's a uh, constants as well, which we will see throughout this lesson right here. Uh, but again, you have to be able to understand this vocabulary because if you don't, not only will this lesson not make a lot of sense, but future ones where I'm going to be using a lot of this vocabulary will not make sense either. So first off, we got variables. Variables are just letters. Now, in math expressions, they represent numbers. Sometimes they can represent many numbers. Uh, and it's, it's possible in the future you may have to write your own uh, expressions or equations where you'll be choosing whatever variable you want. But when you do that, the recommendation is to avoid O's, I's, lowercase L's, and E's. Uh, so O's because they look like zeros, and then lowercase L's because they look like ones. Then I's and E's represent something very different in mathematics. We, we recommend that you avoid those in the future. But, as I said, uh, using and seeing variables, we're going to see those quite often uh, in problem solving, but in mathematics as well. In fact, uh, I don't know that they necessarily ever really go away. So you'll be hearing the word variables or variable quite often in the future. All right, so here we go. The, the four vocabulary right here. We got uh, terms. Now, it's important to remember in an expression... Okay, so a math expression, by the way, is just, it's, a, it's some kind of math formula that's, that has uh, values that are separated by addition or subtraction, okay? So if, if you looked at some expression, just something random like uh, 2x plus 5 like this, this would have two terms. The 2x is a term, and then this is a 5, which is a term. Now, it's important that you understand that they're separated by addition or subtraction, not multiplication or division. So the 2 and the x are by themselves one term. But also that each term takes the operation to its left as its sign, addition or subtraction. So uh, addition would indicate positive. So this would be considered a positive 5 term. If for some reason it was showing as minus 5, then the term here would be considered a negative 5, not positive anymore, okay? So this has two terms, 2x now, and now that we've changed it, negative 5. Like terms are terms where they either have the same variable or they just don't have any variables at all, okay? And then it does indicate that you have to have the same exponents. We won't see a lot of exponents in the future, but one of our examples will now, the nice thing about what we call like terms is that they can be combined to simplify an expression. So if I started putting more terms into this example expression, like maybe a positive uh, 4x right here. Now you have a 2x term and a positive 4x term. It's positive because of the plus sign to its left. These would be considered like terms that you then could combine. Uh, and, yeah, we could even add more to it, like uh, that's a positive 2x, so uh, make it, I don't know, 6 right here. And now you have a 6 and a negative 5 that you could combine as well, okay, because the 6 and the negative 5 here are considered like terms. But you can't combine non-x terms with x terms. So the 6 and the positive 2x's, you can't combine those because they're not like terms. It's like saying you got 6 apples and 2 oranges gives you 8 apples or eight oranges. No, that does not, it's not what you give. That's not what it would give you. You gotta keep those separated because they're not the same item. 
So it's the same thing in mathematics. Like terms indicates that you have the same item, like two apples and four apples. That'd be like six apples right there. But saying you got six oranges and then two apples is not eight apples or eight oranges. You could say you got eight oranges and then you ate five of them. Okay, that'd be fine right there. Okay, so like terms, you have to be able to search those out through an expression and also uh, combine them if you see any like terms. Coefficients. Uh, this is probably more complicated than it needs to be, but coefficients, they're uh, numbers being uh, multiplied by letters or variables. So in this expression, is in this one that we just put up here, is there any coefficients? Yes, there is. Is 6 a coefficient? No, because it's not being multiplied by a letter. Now, there's a, there's a letter right there. Is there a number being multiplied by? Yes, there is, and it's not showing the multiplication. Remember, if you don't see the operation, you have to know that it's multiplication. It's the only operation that does not have to be shown. So... For this term, positive 2x, the 2 is considered the coefficient. Not 2x, just the 2. And they got a negative 5. That's not being multiplied by a letter. But here, the 4 is being multiplied by a letter. So 4 would be considered also a coefficient. Constants, constants they're just numbers by themselves. So the 6 is considered a constant. And then, the, the again, this negative 5, that would be considered a constant also. Okay? So they're just the numbers by themselves. Now, in the future, we're going to be showing uh, com combining like terms with uh, little, I don't know, lines like this. Uh, and we'll do that in the future. But for now, it's just important for you to get this vocabulary down. So in the future, when I say terms, you know what I'm talking about. If I say like terms, now you should know what I'm talking about. Coefficients as well, because we do talk about coefficients quite often. And then constants just numbers by themselves, okay? You're going to be hearing this vocabulary all the time. Well, at least a lot of time from here on out. So just, this is just asking, what are the, what is the coefficient of x for each of these? Let's start with this one, okay? Now, um, coefficients of x, sometimes it's a little tricky, especially when we're starting to get used to this stuff, because some students say there is no coefficient on this one. Okay, but there is. There is, and it's it's what we call a phantom one. Well, why is it called a phantom one? It's because it's there, you just can't see it. It's lurking in the shadows, hidden, always watching, which is kind of what makes these phantom ones so creepy. It's uh, it's a phantom one right there. Okay, now some students, they, they choose not to show these. My recommendation is to show it, that you can see it, until you get a little bit more experience with this, because until you do, uh, again, the, one of the biggest mistakes we see on this is where students say there is no coefficient, but there is. Now, what is the coefficient? Because that's the question. Coefficient. Kind of a big word. And I may have spelled it wrong, too. Not that I really care. The coefficient here. Sometimes the students even say, well, it's one. Well, that, that'd be true if it's just a phantom x, a phantom 1x, but it's actually, it takes that negative sign out there to its left. So it's, it's considered a negative one. A lot of mistakes, uh, an, another common mistake we see with students here is that they put a negative 1x. No, the x is a variable. It is not a coefficient. It's just the number that's the coefficient. So if you ever can't see the number, if you cannot see the number, but you can see the letter, it has to be a phantom one type coefficient. So when we look at this next example, there's two terms. There's eight, and then there's negative x. Once again, we can show the phantom one there, which now that we want the coefficient, it's not just one. It takes the operation to its left as its sign, so it would be considered a negative one coefficient. Then when we look at this third example, well, that's just an X. Well, that's okay because we can still understand, hopefully, that there is a phantom one being multiplied by that X. So when we ask for the coefficient here, um, it's just that phantom one, okay? 
So again, phantom ones, they're values that you can't see all the time. You can make them show if you'd like so that they can't hide in the shadows. But um, they are there, whether you can see them or not. Okay, so there's our coefficients for these types of problems. Why are we showing this? Because these are generally the most tricky for students when we're trying to understand what coefficients are. And we will need to understand what they are in the future because we're going to see them quite often. Okay? Phantom ones. All right, and, and yes, we get the question, well, uh, why is it a phantom one? It's because anything can multiply by one by itself. There's actually an eight times one here, right there. It's just, it's not showing the multiply by one. In fact, there's an infinite number multiplied by ones here. They're just not being shown, that's all. So whenever you see a letter by itself, you can know that there is a phantom one there, always. All right, here's a pretty big expression. We've got 14 terms here, okay? Now we need to identify all of the terms. Then we'll identify all the like terms. Then the coefficients. It doesn't ask for the constants, and that's okay, but we will look to simplify if we can. Now for me, I always start on the left and then I scan to the right. So I, I would encounter my first term here, which is just this uh, 4x. Okay, so that would be considered my first term, 4x. The next term I encounter, moving to the right, and, and yes, yeah, some people actually like to kind of box these in like this. The next term I encounter is this 6. Now remember, each term will take the operation to its left as its sign. So I would show that as positive 6. When I write it out, I don't really need to show the positive sign. Now the next term is an x to the power of 2 term, and its coefficient is 3, so that would be considered a 3x to the power of 2 right there, okay? Next up, we got that negative 9. It's just a constant, but it is its own term. And once again, it's not just 9. The operation to the left was minus, so we show it as a negative. Now, there's, there's a question of, is this a minus sign or a negative sign? It's both. When we look at large expressions like this, uh, a minus sign is a negative sign, and a negative is a minus sign. It's the same thing. Same with a plus sign. A pl plus sign is a positive sign, and so uh, a positive would be made into a plus sign if necessary. The next term here is a negative 5x to the power of 2, so negative 5x to the power of 2. And then the next term is just the next term there. It's a negative 12x's. Again, it's not just 12x's. It's a negative 12x's because of the minus sign. Then we got this constant of 4 right there. Then we got, this is just showing as negative x. I'm going to show it as negative 1x because uh, I want to see that phantom 1 until we get a little bit more experience with this because when we start to combine these, which is what simplify means, uh, it'll be important to understand what that is, okay? The next term is this positive 12x to the power of 2. So I write it just as 12 times x to the power of 2. And then another constant of 4 right there. Now we got this positive 3x's. And then another constant, negative, six, ne negative 16. And then another x term. That's a positive 2x's. And then finally, in the end, the 14th term here is... A, again, I'm not just going to put it as x to the power of 2. I'm going to show it as 1x to the power of 2. These are all the terms. All 14 of them. Okay? So... Once again, we'll, I'll emphasize this. If a term is negative, it will show as minus that term. If it's positive, it'll show as plus the term itself. Now, the leading term, notice it didn't show plus or minus. If it doesn't show the sign, that indicates it's positive. So we just show this as just 4x because positive symbols uh, by themselves we're not to show, okay? Yeah, we got commas for these because it is a list of values. Now, next up, we got, uh, we got a list for like terms on this, okay? 
So the first term that I see, because again, I'm scanning from left to right, I got these four x's right there, okay? So I'm gonna start with just what we would consider the x terms. Right here, okay? And we'll get to the other ones, but the first term that I can see is the four x. So I'm gonna write this in as my first x term. There's four x's right there. It's kind of small on purpose, but we'll get to y here in a second. Are there any other x terms? Because these would be considered like terms, just like we talked about a couple slides ago. Yeah, there's a negative 12 x's right there, so I'm gonna put that in the list as well. But I'm gonna show it as negative 12 x's like this. Next up, for x terms, we got just the negative x, which I showed as negative one x. That's what I'm going to show here, negative 1x. And then we also got the 3x's there. So that would be positive 3x's. I'm going to show it as plus 3x's, and there's a reason for that. We'll get to that. Next up is uh, positive 2x's here towards the end. And so uh, I'm going to show it as a positive 2x's there. Now, my list here is vertical. Again, there's a reason for that. We'll get to it. But those are all the like terms, okay? That, that are x terms. The next set of like terms are going to be constants like the positive six right there. So I'm gonna list this as constants. Where my first constant there is a positive six. The next constant I see is a negative nine there. So I'm gonna take that constant and I'll add negative nine to that list. Now, that would read minus 9 in the future, but as a list, it's showing as negative 9. Next up, we got this positive 4, so I'm going to show in my list positive 4. And then the next constant would be this other positive 4. So I'll put that in as a plus 4 there again. And then finally, the last constant there, it's a little covered, but that's negative 16 there right at the end, negative 16, okay? Those are all the constants. We got five constants, five x terms, and uh, yeah, we can see that all that's left are my x to the power of two terms. Really, we say that as x squared, but x squared terms. Okay? So what x to the power of two terms do I got? Well, the three x to the power of two, so we'll list that. It was 3x to the power of 2. There's also this negative 5x to the power of 2, so we'll put that in the list. Negative 5x to the power of 2. And also positive 12x to the power of 2. Okay. That's a positive 12x's to the power of 2's. And then the last term, which again, I'm not just going to write it as x to the power of 2. Uh, I'm going to show that phantom one there, phantom positive one. Okay, so this is all, this is a list of all the like terms that we have. We got the x terms here, we got the constants, and now our x to the power of two terms. Okay, we'll come back to this here in a second, but that's just the list. Next up, we got coefficients. Okay, so to list our coefficients, uh, we're just looking at numbers that are being multiplied by the letters. Now, there's lots of those, and there's lots of letters being uh, in this uh in this expression. So I start here, I see right there, there's a four being multiplied by an X, so the four is considered a coefficient. Now the six, that's a constant, it doesn't have a letter in it, so we can skip that one, but the next one we see there is a three being multiplied by X to the power of two. So we're gonna put that in the list. The next let, uh, number I see being multiplied by letter, again, that's not just five, it's considered a negative five, being multiplied by the X to the power of two. Next, I see this negative 12 being multiplied by the x, so that's a negative 12 coefficient. Now we see this, this letter here with the x, uh, and it is negative x, so we do need to see that phantom one, but it's a negative one coefficient. Next up, we got the 12 being multiplied by the x to the power of two, that's positive, so I'll just list the 12. The next letter I see is this x, where the three is being multiplied by that x, Next up, I see a two being multiplied by an x there. 
And then finally, it's just an X to the power of two. That means it's a phantom one coefficient right there. Okay, and this is all of the coefficients. Is there some repeats? Yeah, but that's okay. Now, the last thing it wants us to do on this is, uh, is to simplify, okay? Now, when it says to simplify, what it really means is combine the like terms. That's what it means when it says to simplify, which it will show on the assignment for today as well, okay? So this is where I go back to my list of like terms down here. And I look for uh, all three different types of terms. We got x terms, but I'm going to now look to combine these. This will tell me how many x's there are after I combine them. So we got the four x's, minus 12 x's, minus one x's, plus three x's, plus two x's. I'm just gonna enter those coefficients into the calculator. So that's four minus 12 minus one, plus three plus two. Enter, and the calculator tells me that that would result in negative four x's when we combine those. I'm gonna do the same thing with the constants, but again, I like the calculator to do this work for me. So six minus nine plus four plus four minus 16, and it shows as negative 11. Now, I said this already, minuses and negatives mean the same thing in an expression. So right now, in this expression, I know we gotta do an x to the power of twos, but this just reads negative four x minus 12 right now. Well, now let's combine our x to the power of twos. How many of those would there be? Well, I got coefficients of three, negative five, so that's minus five, plus 12, plus one. Enter, and I end up with positive 11 x to the power of twos. So finally, when we simplify, I'll show it here in blue, negative four x minus 11 plus 11 x to the power of twos. That's how many there were of each. So we took 14 terms here in the beginning, and we reduced it, simplified it into three separate terms. Why is there only three separate terms? It's because there were only three different types of terms, x terms, constants, and x to the power of two terms. Often the question comes up, why are x terms different than x to the power of two terms? It's because of that exponent. The exponent makes it a different. This is just an x, this is x times x. That's different, and so it is considered a different term. So you got bananas, apples, and oranges, okay? So you, gotta, you can't combine apples with bananas. You can't combine oranges with apples. None of that kind of stuff. You have to combine apples with apples, oranges with oranges, bananas with bananas. Okay, now this skill, it, I, I don't know if I've emphasized this enough or that I can, but in mathematics, this is crucial. Are you ever going to use this in life? You have to ask your parents, but probably not. It's just... This is what you're gonna have to do in the future, not only in this class, but if you can't do this right now, the rest, pretty much the rest of this year in math is gonna suck. But then also eighth grade is gonna suck and then ninth grade until you can figure this stuff out. Okay, so if you're not understanding, this is a good time to ask questions. Well, let's look at some more practical examples. Yeah, you'll see examples like this on uh, homework, okay? So, once again, when it says simplify, all it's telling you to do is combine the like terms. Okay, so we have to identify the like terms. So first off, I got these t's right there, okay? Do I see any other t terms? Yep. Now it's not just the 6t, remember it's a negative 6t like this. So when I look to combine these t's, how many t's will I have? Well, you got negative nine of them, and this would just read as minus six. Why is it minus? Because it's showing minus right there, negative nine minus six. When I put that in the calculator, I get negative 15 t's. Okay, is there any other types of terms? Yep, there is. We got these constants right here. The positive 12 and the negative seven. Well, those are both constants, so we can combine those. It would just read as 12 minus seven. Put that in the calculator and you get five. Now, since these are not like terms, we have to show the five as positive like this. So it's really negative 15 T plus five. There's a different way to write this, by the way, but it would mean exactly the same thing. It's just a matter of putting the five in the front there and then subtracting your 15 t's. So reading this, this would be negative 15 t plus five, but if I switch these, uh, the negative becomes the minus sign there, five minus 15 t's. These are the same thing. It's kind of like writing a fraction 
uh, you can write fractions in different ways without changing the values. Well, we just wrote these two expressions in different ways without changing the value either. Yeah, looking back at this one, um, remember there, there was four terms, but there was only two different types of terms. That's why our answer in the end, either way that we write it, has only two different terms in it. How about a problem like this one? Well, we got three different terms, but there's only two different types of terms. You got a constant, and you got these two m terms. Since the 14 is the only constant in this problem, I'm just going to keep it down here as 14, okay? Then I will look to see how many m's I have after combining these. Well, well what does that mean with the m's? Well, you're going to take your 4 thirds m's, and you're going to subtract the 13 sixths m's. Whatever this is, that's the coefficient of m. And to do this, I'm just going to use the calculator. So 4 thirds minus 13 sixths. And I push enter. The calculator is showing me negative 5 sixths. So we only had two terms. The 14 was constant, but it had no like terms to combine with. And then the 4 thirds m's minus 13 sixths m's. Yeah, that gave me that negative 5 sixths m's. Of course, you could rewrite it if you'd like to with the negative 5 sixths in front negative 5 6 m's with the 14 but again since it's its own term we have to show it as plus 14 plus because it is a positive 14. all right what if there's decimals yep it still isn't a problem on this because we have two different types of terms constants and x's here's my constants here's my x's okay so for my constants you got eight and then a negative five uh, have a seat, please. 8 and then negative 5, which is uh, it's just 3 on that, okay? And then for your x's, well, how many x's are there? Well, you got uh, 3.5 x's and then a positive or plus 1.9 x's, which when you combine, that's going to give you, uh, looks like 5.4 x's. So that's a 5.4 right there. It's positive, so I'm going to show the plus sign there, okay? So you could write this this way, or if you wanted to, you could write it as 5.4x, still positive, and then the 3 is still positive because of the plus sign as well. These are exactly the same. They're just written in a different order. That's all. For a problem like this one, again, we're just looking to combine any like terms. Now, on this one, I got a 9r. I got a constant negative 12. Again, maybe you can box those in if it helps. You got a positive 4p. Uh, this one, it just it has no... No like terms to combine. So for this one, I'd say that it's um, simplified, simplified already, already simplified, um, cannot be simplified. Uh, on the on the assignment, it will specify how that how you how it wants you to enter that though. That's nice. It was it was even less work than all the other ones, whether it was a fraction, decimal, or integers. All right, how about a perimeter problem with a rectangle like this? Well, remember, perimeter is just where you add up all the out, outer edges. Uh, that's what we mean when we say perimeter here, okay? So, if I want the perimeter of the shape, I've got to take all the outer edges. Now, the thing about this one is you got the 4y here. It's a rectangle, so the opposite side here would also be 4y. So I mean, I would take that 4y, and I could add this 9x's right here. I'll use a different color. These 9x's, yeah, you'd add those. And then you'd add the bottom part, which is another 4y. And then this right edge right here matches the opposite, which is also another 9x's, okay? Now it wants us to actually write this in its most simplest form. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna combine my y's and my x's. They're like terms, right? So I got my y's here. There's four y's plus another four y's is eight y's. And then I've also got x terms, nine x's plus another nine x's would be positive 18 x's. Okay, now I don't want to show that it equals p because that makes it an equation. This wants just the expression. Uh, but once again, it's possible to switch those with your positive 18 x's first and then your positive eight y's second, like this. These mean exactly the same thing. They're just written in a different order. There's our two objectives. We need to be able to identify terms, like terms, coefficients. And again, you could put, you could add to that uh, constants. And then, yeah, we also need to be able to simplify expressions 
this is maybe redundant, but simplifying expressions is the same as combining like terms.